It's okay. Uh, good morning. Okay, so today we will have a discussion. Okay, short discussion on the on add puzzle video. Okay, so this will be chapter number seven, part two. So last week we uh, in the lecture we covered until part one. So in add puzzle we covered part two. So part two uh, will be talking about the introduction to hydraulics. So the other elements in the introduction. Okay, so we start with pump. Okay, so in hydraulic, so we are not using, uh, so we are using pump, so we are not using compressor. Uh, so compress, uh, compressor meaning, so you need to compress something, then only you send. So in hydraulic, you cannot compress the hydraulic oil, uh, the amount liquid. So liquid you cannot compress. So we consider it incompressible. So you cannot, since you cannot uh, compress, so you just transfer from one place to another place. So untuk itu kita gunakan pump. So we are using pump. So the function of uh, hydraulic pump. Okay. So you need to know the function. So hydraulic pump convert mechanical energy from the prime mover, the engine or electric motor into hydraulic energy. So meaning you already have a reservoir, you already have uh, hydraulic oil. So you need to uh, move from one place to another place. Uh, untuk uh, untuk hasilkan hydraulic energy. So hydraulic energy will be used to do work. Okay, then the pressure energy is used to operate the actuators. So uh, so whatever things that it's moving, uh, so uh, it will uh, create a force. Okay, the principal pump push uh, on uh, hydraulic fluid and create flow. Uh, they uh, operate in the displacement principle. Fluid is taken in and displaced to another point. Um, so the function of pump, so how it will work, it will take the hydraulic oil, it will either save and send one shot or it will be sent continuously. Okay, so there are two types of pump. Okay, the first pump is positive displacement and non-positive displacement. So the dual genus, dual genus pump. So non-positive displacement, so the difference between uh, non-positive displacement pump dengan positive displacement pump uh, so non-positive displacement like a centrifugal pump so centrifugal pump yang kita boleh tengok dalam uh, aquarium so, aquarium punya pump kan uh, so dia, dia, dia akan ambil air so it will uh, generate the flow then it will send to another place uh, so similar so centrifugal pump is a non-positive displacement pump so maksudnya dia uh, apa uh, udah uh, apa uh, fluid yang masuk dia terus uh, send to the other place. Uh, so pump ni dia akan increase the flow rate. Uh, so because of pusingan kan. Uh, so dia akan hasilkan flow rate yang tinggi then it will send to the other place. So it won't say uh, keep anything. So it will just uh, divert from one place to another place. So uh, it will have a continuous flow. Okay, so it uses an impeller or propeller. So impeller yang fan dekat tengah-tengah ni. So you have an impeller. So to create the flow. Uh, so to move fluid by momentum. Uh, so contoh dia adalah centrifugal pump, propeller pump, used in coolant pump and water pump on radiator cool engine. Uh, so ini adalah sedikit contoh lah. Okay, so then now come to positive displacement pump. Uh, positive displacement pump perbezaan dengan non positive dia akan simpan dulu something so uh, fluid in so it will keep first so lepas dia dah sampai satu level so it will send one shot ok so it has a, a trapping uh, mechanism so it will trap a fixed amount of fluid then force displacing uh, the trap volume into discharge pipe so simpan dulu Kemudian baru dihantar. Okay, so if we have geared pump, we have vane pump, piston type pump. So all these are different types of pumps. Okay, so vane pump, so boleh boleh tengok. So in between dekat sini ada ada ruang. So dekat tengah tengah pun ada ruang. Okay, yang bulan bulan ni. So uh, fluid will enter. So it will start to fill the gap. So once the gap is filled, then it will be uh, displaced to the production line ataupun tempat-tempat lain. 
okay then we have a radial piston pump uh, so similarly so uh, udara akan masuk dekat tengah uh, dekat tepi ni uh, yang warna merah semua adalah ruang ruang untuk fluid disimpan then after some time it will with uh, send to the next process then we have gear uh, ni bentuk gear so uh, supply masuk so it will fill the gaps in between the gear then uh, after some time it will create a force and it will send to the next uh, next uh, stage okay so all that are the types of pump okay so ada advantage so boleh baca lah dekat sini so ada sedikit advantage uh, so positive displacement is the one that we normally we will use and uh, it will be slightly expensive daripada non positive so non positive we don't involve a lot of mechanism uh, so uh, positive displacement is highly efficient uh, so dia boleh bagi constant flow rate sebab dia simpan dia hantar dia simpan dia hantar so it can determine how much flow rate it want to send uh, so uh, can obtain a smooth and precisely controlled motion so hydraulic ni perbezaan dengan pneumatic adalah precision uh, so maksudnya dia nak sampai dekat that particular place dia akan sampai dekat that particular place macam pneumatic dia uh, maybe akan terlajar sikit so we life lag uh, sebab dia uh, not focus on accuracy ok so these are some of the advantage that you boleh baca lah ok so I'm not going through uh, so ada efficiency up to 78% ok so non positive should be lesser lah maybe 90 90% uh, so 8% tu make, make a lot of difference ok hydraulic oil uh, so hydraulic for uh, hydraulic oil adalah medium yang kita gunakan dalam hydraulic sistem hydraulic so similar like uh, pneumatic pakai apa compressed air uh, so pneumatic pakai compressed air hydraulic pakai hydraulic fluid ok so hydraulic fluid so uh, nice, nak senang ingat uh, ingat dalam kereta so, ada coolant system, ada brake system semua gunakan minyak so, minyak gear, so minyak brake uh, so, so ada, ada banyak uh, so so that is uh, example lah of hydraulic oil so ada primary task and also secondary task so primary task is adalah benda yang dia memang akan buat so tujuan dia so secondary task alang-alang so things is already there so it will do also uh, itu adalah secondary task ok so primary task power transmission, pressure and motion transmission and signal transmission for control so these are the things lah yang circuit yang you design so ada ada uh, power transmission so you transmit dari supply ke actuation so you trans transfer to the valve valve semua tu kan so that is what we call as a power transmission signal transmission is like you are sending one signal from one valve to another valve uh, so itu adalah fungsi hydraulic oil so uh, secondary so lubrication sebab dia dah minyak uh, so kalau minyak ada uh, akan mengelakkan benda berkarat so since it's already there so it will provide a lubrication of a rotating and translating component to avoid friction and wear uh, so dia akan kurangkan geseran ok lesser, lesser uh, so kurang geseran maksudnya uh, benda uh, barang boleh tahan lama lah ok so then it transport away from the location of each generation usually into the reservoir so if in one particular place uh, ada apa each generated the hydraulic oil, hydraulic oil will transfer it to the reservoir so the reservoir the it will be dissipated uh, so uh, yang abah tu akan uh, dibuang ok then uh, transport of particular particles to filter ok kita tahu minyak Dia, dia boleh attract uh, dirt uh, so dia kena dekat dirt uh, so dia kena dekat hydraulic oil so hydraulic oil will bring to the filter filter akan filter up uh, so itu adalah sedikit advantage lah so protection of surface 
from chemical attack especially corrosion okay so the main thing yang selalunya uh, dekat production lah kita uh, kita akan uh, apa uh, check lah corrosion so kita tak nak benda berkarat uh, sebab benda berkarat so let's say is related to food industry or medical industry so karat uh, can play a lot of uh, da- damage lah ok so we want to make sure things are safe uh, safe, for, safe for consumption safe for what uh, skin ke apa ke uh, so we want to protect from the chemical attack uh, so it will provi- provide a layer of protection so itu adalah fungsi hydraulic oil so ada few requirements Uh, yang sebelum kita pilih So even kalau nak pilih uh, Minyak engine kan So ada banyak jenis kan So non synthetic, semi synthetic uh, So fully synthetic Harga pun lain-lain So it, all that are Having some kind like uh, attributes uh, So kalau Pakai minyak ni, so engine performance Will be better uh, So fuel efficiency will be better So ada ada few things that we need to Consider So similar in hydraulic system So so kalau you dah pilih hydraulic oil You kena check So memang macam dekat Dekat pasaran So you can find a cheaper hydraulic oil So better grade So exclusive one pun ada So of course the price range will be Different But uh, according to your application You kena pilih uh, So pilih yang sesuai So ini adalah sedikit requirement Yang uh, you boleh tengok First, you see the functional. So, you nak gunakan untuk tujuan apa? Okay. So, you want to provide a good lubrication. So, nak viscosity. Uh, so, not dependent on the temperature and pressure. So, we know Malaysia ni memang always humidity high, temperature pun high. Okay. Pada tempat tu, humidity low. Uh, so, for that kind of uh, uh, climate, so what will be the... Uh, oil that we can use uh, So kalau kau oversee So maybe ada ada four seasons So semua season tu Kita nak pastikan uh, It can be used Okay so it's not uh, Dependent on the temperature and pressure Then we want need to provide uh, Heat conductivity Jangan you beli minyak uh, Room temperature pun terbakar uh, Jangan So sistem akan terbakar lah So it will cause a lot of damage So dia kena ada sedikit apa heat resistance tu kena ada heat conductivity kena ada uh, even kena heat pun uh, you still boleh lalu ke uh, reservoir untuk hilang. Uh, jangan halfway terus terbakar. Uh, so janganlah macam tu. So at times we cannot compensate uh, low cost. Uh, selalu sekarang kan uh, low cost tu barang harga barang dah naik. So everyone want low cost low cost low cost. Kadang-kadang low cost tu is not a solution uh, Sebab low cost will cause another problem And Then you need to spend more Okay So kena check benda ni So low low heat uh, expansion coefficient uh, Meaning yang ni pun berkaitan dengan heat lah uh, So if heat is uh, low, low heat expansion maksudnya uh, Sikit je tolerance to the heat uh, So room temperature let's say is 30 degrees So maybe 40 degrees dah terbakar So janganlah macam tu Okay so larger elasticity modulus Okay this for the expansion Okay So another thing eh Adalah uh, economy uh, Economic uh, factors uh, So tengok lah uh, Not overpriced Jangan beli macam terlalu expensive uh, Slow aging and thermal and chemical stability In long life cycle Cycle uh, So jangan you beli So you pakai eh, Setiap bulan kena tukar uh, So it will cost Kalau you add up uh, So it will You will be Spending more than You beli minyak yang bagus So minyak yang bagus Maybe harga Expensive sikit Tapi boleh tahan setahun uh, So You need to check all these Economic uh, factors Kemudian safety Okay I flash point And in certain case Not inflammable at all So hydraulic ni dia penting uh, So it's a bit dangerous Sebab dia minyak So minyak memang mudah terbakar So dia kena ada air flash point Apa tu flash point? Siapa tahu? Flash point 
tak ada kot solat dalam dalam ad puzzle ok so flash point uh, maksudnya uh, temperature di mana fire akan start uh, so so perlu ada air flash point maksudnya air temperature untuk fire bermula so let's say 100 degree celsius so kalau dekat environment susah nak sampai 100 degree celsius so dia takkan terbakar lah so dia ada air flash point uh, so in certain case jangan Jangan terbakar lagi baik uh, So it's better if It's not inflammable at all So chemically neutral Not aggressive to all uh, Against all material It touches uh, Jangan minyak tu macam Bocor Terus everywhere ada chemical reaction uh, So kena dekat skin So you ada, ada chemical reaction uh, Kan So mengakis ke apa kan so we don't want that also so chemically neutral uh, low air dissolving capability not inclined to foam formation uh, foam so buih so kalau dalam minyak ada buih so it will cause uh, system to have uh, problem uh, system akan ada, ada problem so dia akan macam sangkut lah uh, so imagine your mission is jerking uh, so tiba-tiba dia macam jerk uh, so it will cause uh, vibration Dia akan rosak So ada banyak bedah Then Environmental friendliness uh, So no, uh, so itu adalah tugas kita lah So kita nak jaga Alam sekitar So jangan macam ada pencemaran uh, So no pollution So no toxic effect uh, So jangan minyak itu Nanti dah siap-siap buang dekat sungai uh, So it will cause a lot of problem Sebab ikan makan uh, so whatever in the in the river uh, then uh, we will use for so many processes uh, kemudian at the end kita kita sendiri yang makan makan ikan tu uh, then uh, minum ke apa ke so it will cause environmental uh, arm so make sure the hydraulic oil you that you choose is not uh, is environmental friendly Okay, so properties of hydraulic fluid So, ini adalah sedikit property lah So, I dah discuss tadi So, pastikan the good lubricity, stable viscosity Good dissipation, flash point, idle flash point Low form tendency, fire resistant uh, So, rasa ni, ni semua macam Apa yang you beli untuk kereta lah Okay, so pastikan uh, You letak yang terbaik So, spend a, a little bit more pun tak apa as long it can give maximum of all this uh, berapa? lapan lapan characteristic ok so dalam exam kalau saya tanya so how you choose your hydraulic oil uh, bolehlah explain so benda-benda ni ok uh, so ini adalah uh, all the explanation for each properties so good lubricity so maksudnya dia boleh bagi apa lubricate lubricate maksud melincirkan okey melincirkan proses okey of the hydraulic movement ke uh, actuator movement ke cylinder movement ke motor ke okey so it, it can it, it, it can uh, go without any wear and tear uh, very smooth uh, so itu adalah good lubricity so good heat dissipation uh, so kena keluarkan aba dari sistem so we don't want it to be there so we want to send it to the air cooler or you want to dissipate it to the atmosphere through the reservoir ok flash point uh, ini adalah flash point uh, tadi ada tengok so low low flash point oils are not used as hydraulic oil sebab dia mudah terbakar so flash point adalah uh, lowest temperature uh, that the fluid uh, requires For the fire to start uh, So lagi tinggi lagi baik uh, Jangan terlalu dekat dengan Room temperature Room temperature dekat Malaysia berapa? 27 uh, So perlis tinggi lah Sekarang lagi panas kan <laughs> uh, Perlis I think uh, Easily 33, 34 macam tu uh, Because Naturally, police is near to Thailand. 
So we are not using uh, iklim katulistiwa geography kan. Uh, so we are using so we are having a monsoon tropical season. So police ada empat season. Siapa tahu? Police ada empat season tau. Betul. Ada tiga bulan tu akan hujan. Tiga bulan tu akan terlalu panas. Macam sekarang lah. Sebab tu polis ada arum manis. Because panas tu. Okay. So tiga bulan lagi. Angin. Uh, so angin. So tiga bulan lagi. So, musim. Musim apa? Musim arum manis lah. Tak adalah. So actually ada lah empat. Uh, so ada empat actually uh, Climate so, Kalau you betul-betul Can Can Can, can see lah Okay So flash point So make sure You choose the uh, Hydraulic oil Based on the uh, Eye flash point Okay Foam tendency Boleh baca sikit So foam result From air And other gases Become Entrain In the hydraulic fluid Okay, so uh, udara boleh masuk melalui the hydraulic system in the reservoir and also through air leaks. Uh, so air leaks dekat di punya uh, os. Okay. So it can uh, affect the operation and the lubrication of the machine. So you perlu gunakan foam inhibitor. No, my, uh, maksudnya foam uh, remover. Uh, so dia kena detect foam Dia kena buang uh, So apa yang dia selalunya akan buat So uh, This foam inhibitor Dia akan uh, Jadikan uh, buoy itu lagi ringan So buoy akan naik ke surface So dekat surface tu dia akan uh, Masuk ke udara uh, So dia akan jadi macam tu lah uh, So So modify the surface tension Surface tension of the air bubbles So that can easily break up Easily break up ataupun Buih-buih dia akan macam gabung sekali Dia akan jadi ringan Dia akan pergi ke surface ha, Pergi ke surface So surface tension dah, dah kurang So dia akan pecah ha, So dia tak boleh tak And fire resistance so I dah explain tadi It's Stable viscosity ha, Stable viscosity maksudnya ha, Kelikatan Kelikatan minyak So pastikan dia boleh tahan lama lah so, uh, Macam saya cakap lah So don't like Kelikatan rendah So after some uh, chemical reaction One month kena tukar balik uh, So maintenance cost will be high uh, So if you can change Bagus lah uh, If not If you need to outsource You need to call so someone uh, To come and check Technician ke so You need to pay more Okay So a lot of cost involved Okay Prove uh, Prevent uh, rust formation Uh, so ni adalah karat Ok So aggressive to yellow metal Apa tu yellow metal Yellow metal Siapa tahu yellow metal Maksudnya ada satu soalan kot yang ni Dalam Dalam ad puzzle tu Bagi tiga contoh So yellow metal adalah apa-apa logam yang warna kuning lah Yellow, yellowish metal ha, Apa yang selalunya warna kuning? Brass Brass ha, Apa? Dalam bahasa Melayu apa? Brass Selalunya digunakan untuk drum Drum set so, Dia ada brass punya, Macam logam lah ha, So it's a form of uh, alloy so, so alloy tu dia macam campuran lah Campuran logam dengan Uh, property lain uh, So dia Kadang-kadang dia akan jadi campur So that it will be more robust So dia boleh tahan lama uh, So dia ada, ada uh, Beberapa ciri yang dia tengok uh, Kemudian yang selalu kita tengok Macam Bronze Bronze apa ya Bronze uh, Bronze adalah Gangsa Gangsa uh, So gangsa pun you tahu kan Biasa tengok kan Haa uh, So yang medal yang selalu dapat tu Dia bukan real gangsa lah uh, But actually ada sedikit uh, Macam apa uh, Bekas ke uh, So ada pot pot uh, Yang uh, made of brass So dia boleh tahan lama So tahan apa So dia ada few 
uh, things yang dia boleh buat so uh, bronze pun adalah campuran campuran uh, beberapa logam so we call as a alloy okey kemudian yellow metal lagi gold pun yellow metal uh, tapi gold uh, dia takkan rust lah uh, so ada juga few things that uh, you boleh at least down Okay, so it will uh, make sure it's not aggressive to yellow metal. So, so yellow metal ni selalunya ada ke mana-mana. Especially the hydraulic uh, ores. Uh, dekat pipe pun ada kan. Yang uh, yellow color punya fitting. Uh, yellow color punya pipe. Uh, so, dalam tu. So, jangan dia uh, mudah berkarat. So, so, we don't want it to attack the metal surface. Okay, so non-toxic, easy to handle, so environmental. So as an engineer, so you have a responsibility to safeguard the environment. Uh, walaupun orang lain tak buat, engineer kena buat. Uh, so we have a social responsibility as an engineer. Uh, so as engineer, uh, we are meant to solve problems. So dekat mana-mana ada problem, so engineer kena ada to solve the problem. So one of the major problem yang uh, kita hadapi sekarang is the environmental. Now because uh, one one side kita uh, macam clear all this bukit semua tu tapi tanam semula tu tak ada. And another side adalah pencemaran. So pollution. So we have a lot of environmental issue but uh, we not tackling it. So other parties are not tackling it. So we as the engineer jangan tambahkan So, jangan tambahkan pencebaran uh, melalui sistem kita. So, whatever system that we are designing, so make sure it's not harmful uh, to the environment, so to the animals or what lah. Okay, so pastikan dia boleh jaga. Dan kalau boleh tolong untuk increase, it will be better. Okay, so accumulator. So, accumulator. Uh, Okay, so uh, hydraulic accumulator is a pressure storage uh, reservoir in which a non-compressible uh, hydraulic fluid is held under pressure by an external source. Uh, so, uh, accumulator. Accumulator adalah satu tempat untuk simpan hydraulic oil yang tak ada pressure. Okay, so it's like a storage lah, storage for the hydraulic oil. Uh, so, it can be like a small tank like that lah. Okay, so ada tiga jenis. Uh, tiga jenis benda yang akan create the pressure ok, so kita akan tengok lah so accumulator is actually a energy storage device ok, energy storage uh, device so ada tiga jenis accumulator ok, so function of hydraulic accumulator is to, talk, uh, is to store pressurized oil so three types weighted accumulator, spring loaded accumulator and gas charge accumulator ok so uh, weight loaded type accumulator ini adalah accumulator yang uh, already used for hundreds of years beberapa tahun tu kita dah gunakan so kita akan letakkan dead weight uh, on top uh, so because of gravity dia akan create uh, pressure so boleh tengok so ini adalah uh, dead weight uh, pressure So, boleh tengok dekat sini ada hydraulic oil. So, hydraulic oil dia ada volume. Then, you put this piston. Kemudian, you letak uh, pemberat. Nah, pemberat ni maybe 1 kg, 2 kg, 3 kg. Depends on the size of uh, this uh, storage lah. Uh, so, apa akan jadi? So, kalau you letak pemberat dekat atas. So, what will happen? Ya? Huh? Apa akan jadi dekat tank ni? Ada hydraulic oil. So, dia akan bergerak ke atas ke ke bawah? Ha, ke bawah kan? Sebab gravity. So, because of gravity. So, kalau uh, volume ni kurang. So, when the volume is reduced, uh, dia akan create pressure lah. Uh, so, dia akan create pressure. Uh, then, uh, Uh, it will, it can uh, store that pressure lah because of this dead weight. Okay, so this is a simple one. So one more thing is a spring loaded accumulator. Yani dia tak gunakan dead weight, tapi dia gunakan spring. 
So spring pun ada tenaga keupayaan Potential energy A lot ha. So oil reservoir so Oil masuk dia akan mampat Dia akan pressurize the air Okay So that's one uh, Another thing So yang dua-dua ni adalah Yang ni adalah mechanical Yang tadi pun Dia mechanical jugalah So because it's happening uh, by uh, Natural Okay, then we have gas charge Okay, so we have gas charge Gas, uh, digunakan gas Untuk create uh, pressure Okay, so boleh tengok dekat sini nah, Ini adalah tiga type So, ini adalah bladder type So, boleh tengok warna biru ni adalah gas Okay, so dekat sini ada gas uh, Then um, Okay, so this is the hydraulic port So, this is the charging valve Okay, so ada gas dekat sini So kalau gas ni dikembang So it will increase uh, Increase the pressure Okay So yang ni adalah charging uh, Valve So yang ni dia main dengan uh, Keluasan, the volume lah Volume So kalau lagi besar dia punya volume Lagi Lagi uh, The, the pressure will be increased So ini adalah diaphragm Sama juga So fluid port So dimasuk Dia akan uh, When it expand uh, So it will uh, increase Yang ni pun sama Digunakan piston uh, So hydraulic cap So you have gas inside uh, So di Udara ada dekat sini So uh, it, dia akan mampat Okay, so dia akan mampat uh, Gunakan uh, This hydraulic so Hydraulic and also the gas Okay, so This charging valve is the place Where you can connect to your system uh, So lepas dia dah pressurize So you can use lah Macam tong gas juga Okay, so you can uh, bring this to anywhere Okay, so advantage of hydraulic system So hydraulic system uh, So I just ringkaskan yang ni So hydraulic system adalah um, Dia menggunakan incompressible fluid uh, Which is the hydraulic oil uh, Sebab dia tak boleh compress uh, So dia punya parameter tak banyak So for you to control So you always know So this amount of uh, hydraulic oil Can generate this much of force Okay so dia ada air efficiency Okay air efficiency So they provide consistent power output. Uh, yeah, tapi yang tu uh, not uh, not possible in pneumatic or mechanical device. Sebab uh, pneumatic dia cuma boleh maksimum 10 bar. Uh, dia tak boleh buat uh, apa a force yang besar. It cannot generate for, uh, force yang besar. Okay, so possible leakage is less. Uh, in the hydraulic system compared to pneumatic system So pneumatic system Tiba-tiba ada bocor So udara akan keluar uh, So hydraulic ni uh, Kalau dia ada lubang baru dia akan uh, Keluar Walau, Kalau lubang kecil Because of the oil Oil akan pergi tutup uh, Lubang tu uh, Unless you have some pressure For the hydraulic oil to leak, leak out lah. Uh, so uh, Dia susah Okay, tapi hydro uh, pneumatic is easier. Okay, uh, then the, the maintenance cost is less because so normally uh, the hydraulic uh, oil ataupun hydraulic component it can last a bit uh, long. So one of the example adalah auto gear dekat rumah. Setiap bulan uh, tukar ke? 
tak ada kan so what will happen if every month kena tukar ha. so cuba guna cuma imagine you gunakan pneumatic punya uh, cylinder so okay you tekan je button boom <laughs> after that dia tak boleh pakai dah <laughs> one time dia boleh buka opening ceremony ni <laughs> ok so tak boleh so precision so you can use maintenance cost is less ok so this system perform well in all environment condition walaupun dia mudah terbakar so if you take a, a good precaution uh, so fire will not happen so itu adalah hydraulic system so main advantage adalah dia punya power and also the precision uh, dia boleh buat uh, benda yang sama dengan ketepatan yang uh, better lah compared to uh, compared to pneumatic so disadvantage ada juga so material storage tank uh, can be corroded uh, ni adalah karat uh, so you, you need to be always uh, good at selecting the hydraulic fluid so that dia boleh bagi juga uh, lubrication dia boleh bagi perlindungan ok then uh, structural weight and size is more which makes it suitable for unsuitable for smaller instrument uh, so dia tak boleh tengok even mobile hydraulic pun besar uh, so yang apa excavator tu pun besar bukan bukannya benda yang kecil so if your application is something uh, smaller tak sesuai lah nak gunakan hydraulic ok smaller impurity in the hydraulic system can permanently damage the system so therefore one should be careful and suitable filter must be installed ok so untuk hydraulic wajib ada uh, a filter uh, filter sebab dia memang mudah attract uh, dirt uh, so dirt yang besar uh, kalau kumpul-kumpul-kumpul dia boleh rosakkan mesin uh, so nanti maintenance will be more lah so leakage of hydraulic fluid is also critical uh, so kalau ada leakage very hard to control uh, so dia akan jadi tempur minyak then orang akan accident will happen uh, then uh, other environmental problem lah uh, so perlu gunakan prevention method and also seal seal is for the oil to not leak ok the okay, idle fluid if not properly uh, disposed properly can be unfold from the environment so hydraulic oil normally apa yang dia buat so dekat kedai workshop apa yang dia buat minyak yang lama tu so kalau biasa pergi servis kereta apa yang dia buat so oil yang lama so dia akan letak satu bekas so dia akan collect dia akan masukkan dalam satu tong so dia bukannya pergi ke belakang masukkan dalam sinki dia flush tak ha, so dia akan simpan so the environmental punya apa the syarikat tu dia akan main so macam polis environment idaman lah so dia akan main dia akan beli tong tu ha, so tong tu dibawa ke dia punya company so they will uh, dilute it so they will properly uh, dia akan gunakan chemical semua then after that what will they will do uh, so baru kalau dah safe baru dia akan lepas dekat sungai uh, dia selalu macam tu lah so that's why uh, in all the company uh, whatever company whatever industry perlu ada environmental engineer uh, so environmental engineer dia akan pastikan benda-benda uh, ni adalah ikut ikut apa yang perlu dibuat lah ok so I think uh, that's all from chapter 7 part 2 ok so kita jawab sikit soalan uh, ok ada, ada few soalan dalam ni ada 7 soalan we just glance through lah ok mostly I dah explain dah Okay, so what is the difference? What is the difference between positive displacement pump and non-positive displacement pump? Ha, soalan ni biasa keluar. Tapi tahun ni tak tahu lah. Saya pun dah tak ingat lah. Ha, soalan apa nanti waktu exam clinic saya bagi. Saya bagi topik yang you perlu fokus. Okay, so what is the difference between positive displacement pump and non-positive displacement pump? Apa apa perbezaan dia? apa yang uh, non positive displacement akan buat ya yeah? ada ada jawapan apa salah pun tak apa 
try je Ya yeah? Ada jawapan? Ah, direct daripada input Ok so betul So non positive displacement So dia dapat dari input So dia akan just channel out Dia akan increase the flow Dia akan hantar ke tempat lain ha, So dia tak akan simpan ke apa lah Ok Macam pump air water pump dekat rumah Kalau ada dekat rumah kan So pressure low Apa yang dia akan buat Dia non positive ke positif Positive displacement Pump air, pump air dekat rumah Siapa cakap uh, positif? Siapa cakap non positif? Non positif, so ada. Uh, so dekat rumah tu, kenapa pam air tu ada bunyi? Selalu ada kan? Tu, tu, tu. Apa tu? Bunyi apa tu? Hah? Semua pakai mask saya pun tak, tak tahu siapa cakap. <laughs> Tapi boleh dengar. Ada bunyi dekat sini, saya tengok sini, terus senyap <laughs> So kenapa dekat pump air dekat rumah Selalu ada dekat belakang ataupun depan rumah kan Kita so, connect dekat main pipe Ataupun connect dengan tank So kenapa dia selalu ada bunyi Tu, tu, tu Sebab dia adalah positif, positif displacement So bunyi tu, so, tadi positif displacement apa yang dia akan buat ha, Dia akan store dulu So dia akan uh, dapat air dari main source Dia akan simpan dulu Kemudian dia baru akan push out ha, Bunyi push out tu yang bunyi uh, Water pump tu Tu So dia dah kumpul dia nak hantar Ke satu tempat Waktu dia hantar tu baru ada bunyi So it's, uh, it's the sound of The pump is uh, sending to Another place Dia dah simpan cukup ha, So so answer to this question What is the difference So one, one main, main difference adalah Ha, boleh tengok dekat sini ha, Centrifugal pump adalah non-positif lah So positive displacement pump Kalau perbezaan dia ha, In centrifugal pump Centrifugal pump adalah pump yang kita gunakan dalam aquarium Ok So the fluid moving out of centrifugal pump Is varying flow rate based on the pressure So apa-apa yang dia dapat Dia terus hantar So the pressure is not uh, regulated Pressure akan berubah-berubah lah Kadang-kadang pressure tinggi, kadang-kadang pressure rendah So certain application is not suitable uh, Because uh, it will require constant uh, constant apa pressure uh, Kalau ada constant pressure, baru dia punya operation will be smooth Cuba bayangkan auto gate dekat rumah So you tekan, after one hour baru dia buka So what will happen? Uh, sebab pressure rendah kan? Uh, so you want it to open, maybe Maksimum dalam setengah setengah minit Or one minit uh, Dia dah buka so you pun dah boleh masuk uh, So It depends on the application So at times centrifugal pump Is not uh, a solution Tapi dalam aquarium boleh uh, So dalam aquarium kalau Even, even though uh, Sebab flow, flow rate is not The concern so boleh lah Boleh guna dalam aquarium Tapi when precision fast response Is required Better gunakan positive displacement Okay uh, So cuba bayangkan pump, uh, positive displacement Water pump dekat rumah uh, Dia bukan non positif Dia centrifugal Pressure takkan naik uh, Sebab problem kenapa you pasang water pump Is because pressure air tak cukup uh, So you nak dia simpan Dia hantar dekat you uh, Cuba bayangkan you tengah mandi uh, You dah on pump Pakai centrifugal pump pula Silap silap pump Sejam pun air tak sampai uh, Dah berbubur sabun dah <laughs> So it will cause a lot of uh, Discomfort lah in daily life So make sure you select uh, The proper proper pump Okay So that's the perbezaan lah Centrifugal pump Dia apa yang dia dapat tu Dia terus hantar Positive displacement pump Dia collect dulu Dia dah, dah sampai Secukupnya baru dia akan hantar okay. Tapi itulah akan ada bunyi Akan ada banyak bunyi lah Okay, second second question Based on your understanding What it means by I power to weight ratio Okay, so dekat sini ada satu calculator Okay, so ini adalah power generated by the system 
and the weight associated uh, power to weight akan dapat dalam ratio unitless uh, so yang ni lagi tinggi lagi baik ataupun lagi rendah lagi baik power to weight ya yeah. tinggi betul so lagi tinggi lagi baik so because more power ok so more power uh, weight, weight selalunya kita tak boleh ubah lah uh, so more power uh, to the weight so maksudnya dia boleh boleh buat uh, more work so more power means so you can do more work lah so similar like uh, if you eat more so you will get more energy so you have more power to do work uh, so sama lah so Based on your understanding what it means by I power to weight ratio The ability of the system to do more work uh, So system they boleh cater a lot of things lah So rather than focus on one task je So if we, so you are designing a system To just do one uh, small task So you tak perlu uh, the I power to weight ratio But if you want the system to do multiple work At a different different rate uh, Pastikan it has a I to power weight uh, I power to weight ratio ok so ratio dia tinggi so yeah, um, in industry when you are designing a system so uh, engineers always will calculate power to weight ratio so pastikan dia more uh, closer to 1 lah so one, 1 or and above will be better ok ok so based on your opinion having negative flash point can Ah, ini adalah multi ah, apa? Dia adalah selection question Ada tiga jawapan dekat sana So negative flash point Maksudnya apa? Negative flash point So flash flash point boleh baca dekat sini I dah explain tadi So if you want to summarize this Flash point adalah satu temperature Di mana fire berlaku Okay Api, uh, api akan mula uh, mula uh, apa flame flame will start to come ok so itu adalah flash point so kalau flash point dia negatif soalan dia cakap flash point negatif flash point negatif maksudnya uh, maksudnya apa so can cause fire to happen ataupun can cause oil to freeze ataupun prevent fire from happening so mana satu answer Kalau negative flash point Ya yeah. Fire to happen Betul Ok so kalau temperature dia negative Kalau temperature negative So what will happen Kalau temperature negative Macam cold country pun Tiba-tiba akan ada, ada api uh, Maybe cold country Api itu they want lah So panas, nak panas kan Tapi in, imagine in Malaysia so we have uh, th in police 33 degrees ataupun 30 degrees lah to be round so if the flash point is negative uh, so whatever condition pun everything akan terbakar uh, so so based on this uh, so the flash point is the indication of how easy a chemical may burn uh, so Kalau dia negatif ataupun kurang Kurang uh, flash point So meaning it will cause fire to happen uh, Oil to freeze Oil to freeze is not uh, not related to uh, flash point Walaupun dia betul lah uh, temperature, temperature rendah Tapi negative flash point is not causing the oil to freeze uh, So it's freezing because apa? Sebab apa? Takat beku dia rendah So freezing point is very less uh, Bukan because, because of flash point so, baca, baca soalan dia lah uh, Prevent fire from happening is opposite of this So the, the sini pun you tahu lah It must be either one of this okay. So dua-dua pun contract big Okay number 4 How the heat in the hydraulic system will dissipate Macam mana Aba dalam system akan uh, dibuang Sistem hidrolik Macam mana proses dia So let's say dekat point A Dia detect apa So what what did they all do
So let's say you have a hydraulic system, okay. So in between you are the tank. So this is point A, point B. So the case ini they detect ada heat. So what it will do? Macam mana uh, this this heat will be uh, dissipated? Apa proses dia? So what will be the process? Apa yang dia akan buat? Selalu ni macam mana aba akan dibuang daripada hydraulic system? Di solar ni pun biasa keluar. So how how this heat will be removed? Dia akan buang dekat sini tak? Tak. Apa yang dia akan buat? Apa proses dia? So it will be dissipated dekat mana? Aba akan dibuang dekat mana? So dekat sini. So this is your uh, tank ataupun a reservoir. Okay, apa yang dia akan buat? Dia dah detect it dekat sini. So dia akan hantar balik. Hantar balik ke sini. So dekat sini, it will be like this. Okay, so it will be attached. So oil, hydraulic oil ada dalam ni. So yang ni selalunya dibuat daripada besi. Besi ataupun metal lah. So metal selalunya is a good uh, heat conductor. Uh, so uh, oil sampai dekat sini. So what it will, it will be touching to the surface. Surface of the tank. So dia akan ada heat transfer. So it will be released from the system. Uh, dia akan buat macam tu lah. Because in this place Tak ada You tak boleh pasang air cooler uh, Unless you want to cool the system You nak control the environment Boleh lah So it will have an environmental heat transfer Boleh uh, Tapi normally what it will do If you don't have anything So it will send back to the reservoir The reservoir Dia akan buat manual uh, So dia akan sentuh The, the uh, Apa Partikel yang panas tu Dia akan sentuh dengan Permukaan tank Dan tank ni selalunya dia akan sejuk uh, So dia akan ada heat transfer Okay so that is how it is dissipated uh, So Boleh menjawab dekat soalan ni lah So it will happen in reservoir So you boleh explain macam saya explain tadi Okay number 5 What is the advantage of having high fire resistance? So, apa? Fire resistance. Apa tu fire resistance? So, api mudah start ke? Susah nak start? Ha, susah. So, resistance kan? So, rintangan untuk fire start. Ha, so, advantage rasanya you tahulah. So, kalau dia tak mudah terbakar. So, so I fire resistance meaning dia tak mudah terbakar. So, if it's not easy to uh, catch fire. So maksudnya uh, it will be good lah So it will be uh, having high flash point uh, So the system will be protected Okay so itu adalah one of the advantage lah so, Boleh tengok dekat sini So you have a resistance So ada fire pun dia, dia, uh, Nothing happen So this is uh, one condition where Because of the flame or gases So heat is transfer uh, Heat transfer tu Uh, problem lah uh, So when you have uh, High resistance So it will be Removed from the system It will not pass through To other place uh, To the other side uh, So that is what Advantage of high, having high Fire resistance So it will prevent fire from happening uh, So especially Very useful in hydraulic system Okay number 6 uh, So exam, example of Yellow metal Uh, one is brass Okay, so ada brass, ada bronze Okay, so Color dia lebih kurang nampak sama lah But it's actually different material So dalam tu adalah different chemical Okay, so uh, Bronze and brass adalah alloy So dia bukan uh, Logam yang tulis Okay, so it's not uh, a Real uh, Original punya logam lah So dia adalah campuran kita panggil as alloy Copper ni selalu biasa kita tengok 
So where you will see copper? Electrical wire. Okay, wire you you potong uh, to you nak pasang apa untuk plug ke apa kan? You potong dalam tu ada copper. So copper is a good uh, heat conductor. Uh, so uh, biasalah yang ini ada. So what is yellow metal? Yellow metal adalah metal that is yellowish in color. So apa apa metal yang warna warna kuning? Okay, kuning ataupun uh, warna macam ni lah. Okay, warna macam ni. Okay, so last one. So based on your opinion, which system is better, hydraulic ataupun pneumatic? So hydraulic, so jangan tengok dekat sini lah. Okay, so sistem biasanya ada mechanical system, electrical system, pneumatic system, hydraulic. So mechanical dengan electric, electrical kita biasa. Sebab dari fizik kita belajar, daily life pun kita gunakan. So we know a bit. So pneumatic and hydraulic baru satu semester baca kan. Uh, so you can see the differences. So actually, uh, which system is better is depends on the application you want to use. Uh, dia tak ada, dia ada advantage dengan disadvantage Dua-dua pun ada advantage, dua-dua pun ada disadvantage But depends on your system, macam mana you nak Dia buat kerja And also the all the factors lah uh, Fire, fire uh, Kemudian leakage, environmental hazard uh, Semua tu you take into consideration Tapi uh, dua-dua pun ada uh, advantage So pneumatic advantage dia uh, Dia punya pressure will be low is not uh, less accurate so if your application requires low power a uh, low force uh, kemudian uh, accuracy is not so concerned tapi you nak benda buat dengan cepat so then you can consider pneumatic so since it's not dealing with high force ataupun high pressure component dia is not so expensive uh, kemudian di, you boleh bawa ke mana-mana lah even small uh, things pun you circuit pun you can utilize uh, pneumatic so later for your FIP maybe you can consider lah nak gunakan uh, pneumatic yeah. uh, tapi hydraulic hydraulic is high pressure high pressure maksudnya high force sebab itu dia boleh buat banyak benda-benda berat angkat kereta lah uh, auto gate lah uh, so you're dealing with uh, uh, higher weight uh, tapi it's not mobile ok so you tak boleh bu buat FIP FIP dengan hydraulic system kan So you pun dah ada, kena ada tank lah Kena ada, ada pump lah uh, So a lot of things So it's not, uh, not You cannot like focus on the small system Dia perlu big uh, And uh, Tapi dia ada advantage dia Accuracy In terms of uh, precision Accuracy, efficiency Semua dia ada advantage So kalau you tengok dekat sini Memang uh, macam hydraulic dia ada banyak lah So torque, stiffness, response speed Uh, cost pun fair Okay, cleanliness are uh, poor So if your your concern is about environmental cleanliness uh, So hydraulic is not an advantage uh, So which system is better is depends uh, Both ada advantage and this one advantage So kalau ada soalan macam ni uh, Soalan macam ni pun biasa keluar uh, So you explain based on your understanding lah Tak perlu ikut sangat lah point yang diberi Uh, but based based on what you understand, you will explain. Okay. Okay. So I think that's all. Uh, so nine ten. So take take the uh, ten minutes. Okay. Break. Okay. Then we will continue. So ada soalan tak before that? Okay. So ada soalan boleh tanya. If not, we will take ten minutes break. So we will start at uh, nine nine twenty.